Hello everybody, welcome back. Today's video is going to focus on the technical side of lip sync. In the last video, I introduced lip sync and shared the mouth chart that I use when I'm doing lip sync. Today, I'm going to show you how to set up those mouth shapes in a symbol and then we'll use the frame picker to actually do the animation. One thing I want to make clear right up front is that lip sync is an art form, not a science. And what I'm sharing is my personal approach to lip sync. And my hope is that, you know, you take the tips and guidelines that I've picked up over the years and use it to find your own style of lip syncing. To keep this video short, I'm assuming that you're already comfortable working with symbols, keyframes, and the frame picker. If you're not, I recommend watching my Adobe Animate Basics series first. I'll leave a link to that in the description below and also somewhere near the top of the screen. I'll also leave a link to download the mouth chart from the last video in case you want to follow along. With that said, let's go straight into Adobe Animate where I've got my character set up on the stage. You can see in the properties panel that it's a graphic symbol and we'll be creating the mouth symbol inside it. So let's go inside my character. Here you can see that everything is already placed on its own layer. We've got separate layers for everything like the eyes and the blushies, the base head layer, the back of the hair, the bangs, even the highlights are on its own layer. So let's create a layer for the mouth. To me, it makes sense to have this above the head layer, but below the other facial features like the eyes and the blush marks. Next, I'll use the classic brush tool to draw the first mouth shape, which is this closed mouth. Then we'll convert it into a graphic symbol and make sure to also set it to play single frame instead of loop. Let's click into the mouth symbol we just created and start adding the rest of the mouth shapes. We want to set this up so that we have each mouth shape on its own frame along the timeline. And it's important to have onion skin turned on for this bit because we need to draw each mouth shape in the right position. Let's insert a new blank keyframe and draw the second shape, which is this slightly open mouth. Because onion skin is on, I can see the previous mouth and make sure we draw it in the same position as the previous mouth. Inserting another blank keyframe, let's go ahead and draw the first ah mouth. The important thing to remember when drawing these mouth shapes is that the top of the mouth doesn't move much. Watch yourself in the mirror and you notice that your bottom jaw does most of the moving. So when I draw this mouth, I'm keeping the top of the mouth lined up with the previous drawing. I'm going to speed through drawing the rest of the mouth shapes, but remember to keep the top of the mouth lined up for all these shapes, including the closed mouths and the three round mouths. If you want a more detailed explanation of each mouth shape, I'll leave a link to my last video on screen and in the description. Okay, I went through that pretty quickly. So some of these mouth shapes are pretty rough compared to the mouth chart, but I think they're good enough for this tutorial. And now that we have all 12 mouth shapes inside this mouth symbol, the next thing we want to do is label each mouth shape. To add a label, click on the frame you want to label and then go into the properties panel and type into the label text box. I've got the close mouth selected here, so I'm going to label it closed. To actually see our label, let's drag this slider so we expand the timeline. And now you can see frame 1 with the closed mouth is labeled closed. Labels will make things a lot easier when we start animating because these labels will show up in the frame picker. If I exit the mouth symbol and select it, open the frame picker, you can see that the label we just added is shown in the frame picker underneath the thumbnail. Now I'll quickly go back into the mouth symbol and label the rest of the mouth shapes according to the mouth chart. And for the bigger mouth, I'm just gonna write the same letters but in caps. Same for this one. OK, 
Okay, all our mouth shapes are labeled and you can go back to a normal timeline view by clicking on this reset icon. And now with the mouth shape set up and labeled inside the mouth symbol, all of the mouths have labels underneath them in the frame picker. We can now start getting ready for animation. I've already got an audio clip here, but if you need help with audio, you can watch my video on importing and working with audio in Adobe Animate. Link in the description and also top right. Before we move on, I want to point out that this audio clip is set to stream, which means that we can hear it if we scrub on the timeline. But that your lip sync is good. Let's maybe listen to the audio once so that you have an idea of what we're going to animate. In my opinion, you can tell that your lip sync is good if it is not noticed by your average viewer. Now let's actually start animating. We're going to use the frame picker a lot, so I'm going to drag it out of the toolbar and also make it bigger and make these icons bigger as well. And I also want to leave create keyframe turned on. Let's start by scrubbing the timeline until we hear the first sound. In my opinion. In my opinion. So we know that the first word is in, which begins with a small E sound. So with the frame where that starts selected, I'm going to click on the small E mouth shape in the frame picker. And because create keyframe is turned on, Adobe Animate has automatically created a new keyframe with the E mouth on it. The in sound ends right here. So based on this mouth chart, I should actually use this neutral mouth as an in-between mouth. However, I think dip sync looks a lot clearer when you animate on twos which means letting each frame hold for two frames or longer. So with that in mind, let's continue along the timeline to the next word, which is my, and the M sound starts here, two frames after the E sound. So we want to use the closed M mouth. These two mouths, the MBP and FV mouths, they're quite special because they are used to anticipate a sound. And anticipation is important in animation, so they really benefit from being shown a little bit longer. If I can fit it in, I like to show M or F mouths for three frames, even if it cuts into the next sound. As you can hear over here, he's already went into the I part of my. The I sound he's making is quite loud, so I'm going to select the bigger I mouth. Next word is opinion which starts immediately after the eye mouth. Remember that we want to hold each mouth for at least two frames. So let's go two frames down and add the P mouth for pinion, which we'll hold for three frames, just like the M mouth before. Remember these two mouths benefit from being held for three frames. Pinion. After that we have inion, which breaks down into E, N, E, N. In this case, I use the big E mouth first, followed by the smaller E mouth to add variety and also because the character is pausing in his dialogue, so I'm sort of easing out. Another thing that I like to do when the character pauses is hold the last mouth shape for one or two extra frames. So it doesn't look like his mouth snaps shut right after the last word. So let's just add an extra frame to this second small E mouth. You can see it's holding for three frames now instead of two. And now that we've done the first line, let's play it and see how it looks. In my opinion, if you're thinking that this looks slightly out of sync, you are correct. Light waves move faster than sound waves. This means that our eyes are used to seeing the sound a split second before hearing it. To simulate this, we need to move the keyframes two frames backwards, which means that we see the mouth shapes two frames before hearing the sound. If I press play now, in my opinion, it looks a lot more natural. The next line, you can tell that your lip sync is good. You can tell that your lip sync is good. Next line starts with you can tell. You is an oo sound. And it starts here. So I'm going to use one of the oo mouths. 
as I mentioned before, we want to hold each mouth shape for at least two frames. So I'm going to skip the k C sound and go straight into the R mouth right here. Followed by the N for the end of can. Tell, tell, L, sort of an E sound. Let's use this mouth. And then the L sound. The L sound. L sound has its own mouth with the tongue up. That. And I think you're getting the general idea at this point. Either that or you just completely lost and me talking anymore won't actually help very much. So while I continue lip syncing, let's go over the main takeaways. Firstly, we're used to watching animation on twos. So hold each mouth shape for two frames. Except the M and F mouths, which I try to hold for three frames if possible. Animating the lip sync on ones can make it look like the mouth is flapping or just moving really quickly. Takeaway number two. Before I pause in the dialogue, hold the last mouth shape for an extra frame or two so it doesn't look like the mouth just snaps shut right after the last word. Takeaway number three, shift all keyframes two frames backwards so we see the mouth shapes play just a split second before hearing the sound. Lastly, and this is possibly the most important, these takeaways are just guidelines to help you get started. It's completely fine to bend or break them once you've done some lip sync and you're feeling comfortable and you figure out what looks right to you. Okay, and I'm all done with the lip sync now. So let's see how it looks. In my opinion, you can tell that your lip sync is good if it is not noticed by your average viewer. Let's scrub through it slowly. <laughs> Nothing really stands out or looks weird, which is what I want when it comes to lip sync. My opinion is that lip sync's main purpose is to support the story that you're trying to tell through animation. And that's why I say that good lip sync is lip sync that isn't noticed by the average person who's watching your video. Okay, so thank you for watching this long video. Um, it's a bit messy. I feel I wish I could write a step by step definitive way to do lip sync, but the truth is that it's just such a subjective thing. It's an art form, like I said at the beginning. But if you have any questions, feedback, thoughts, leave them in the comments below. And until next time, have a nice weekend. Goodbye.